Welcome to Photoshop Shorts on Mastering Portrait Photography. In these short videos, they're all going to be less than 10 minutes. I'm going to show you in each video one simple trick or technique or discuss something that's useful in Photoshop. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how to create a reflection just like this one. Now, why would I bother? Well, when I'm photographing dogs in particular, you cannot put them onto a mirror surface. Logistics make it difficult when I'm working on location. And besides, the dogs would skid around, they'd hate it, and you'd be forever cleaning it. So I almost always photograph on a white background for this kind of image. It's already been prepped to have a clean white background and a little bit of shadow under the dog. Look for the other videos on masteringportraitphotography.com that show you how to do that. So that's my starting point. First thing I'm going to do then after I've got my nice clean image, I'm going to go and duplicate the background layer. I nearly always duplicate the background layer no matter what I'm doing. So you should be used to this by now. You go to layer, uh, duplicate layer and I'm going to write in here reflection if I can spell reflection okay so I've now got a new layer I'm then going to flip it because a reflection would be the other way up transform flip vertical and then I'm going to change the layer mode the layer mode to be multiply now we'll deal with layer modes in detail in other videos but basically what happens with multiply if you have white multiplied with white or any other color, you just get the original color. So white on white is white, white on dog color is dog color. But if the upper layer has some color in it and it interacts with the layer below, as you can see here, you get darkening and that's really useful. I'm gonna transform the reflection slightly. So I hit Command T or I go to Edit, Free Transform. Um, I'm gonna drag it down and rotate it slightly so that the outer tips of the reflection touch the outer tips of the original image. Easy if I nudge that with the keys. That looks about right. And that is done. At that stage, you can see here in the middle, I'm still missing a bit of the dog. Now, if this was a real dog sitting on a real mirror, in that gap there, there would be some kind of tone. There'd be a reflection of his foot and his fur. So we're going to pick up the stamp tool. So clone the clone stamp tool S. I'm going to select using Alt. I select a little bit of his back port in the reflection. Just there. And then I'm going to make it touch the back port in the original and I'm just going to paint it in. I'm just filling in that gap. I can be quite coarse about it. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to get rid of anywhere where it looks like obvious repetition because of course um, that's always a tell when someone's been cloning that you have repetition uh, in the image, so I'm just choosing some random bits and just scrubbing that up a little bit. Oops, don't want that one, don't like that very much. I spend my life with my fingers hovering over the undo keys um, when I'm working. Okay, that looks about right. So at this stage, I've actually got what looks like a pretty good glass tabletop or mirror type of reflection. But what we want to do is tune that and adjust it so that it's the kind of reflection maybe off a plastic surface or maybe off vinyl or maybe off even a matte surface. It's more shadow than it is reflection. So the first thing I'm going to do in this next stage is to convert the reflection layer to a smart object. Why? Well, you don't need to go into all of the details for this at this stage, but what a smart object or a smart object layer allows you to do is apply any filter to it and then adjust the filter. So if I decide I want to change the blurring of it, I simply can. So what I do now is I go to the little menu here in the layer palette, slide down to convert to smart object. Now, what I've also noticed here before we do any of those adjustments is we have an overlap. You can see where the reflection is overlapping the original picture of the dog. And of course, that is a tell that we've been messing around in Photoshop. And we do not want to like make it look like we've been messing around in Photoshop. So we add a layer mask. So you go down to the bottom, add layer mask. And then we're going to paint on here with a, a black paintbrush. And if you remember from layer masks, so if I pick up a black paintbrush and I paint anywhere on the image, you'll see that it takes away anything that has black on the layer. If I paint with white back onto the layer, you can see I can put it back in again. And that's the technique with using layer masks. So where we're seeing overlap on these pores, we're just going to pick up a nice black brush. Very quickly, I'm just going to take away any visibility that there's an overlap. This end one isn't too bad, but again, let's just make sure 
there's nothing in there. You can leave a little bit of the darkness in there, actually, because it, it adds a little bit to the realism of it. So I'm not too worried. It looks like the shadow under the paw. Just working my way along, just being careful. Okay, and that's just on the tail here, just painting in black where you can see that there's that little bit of overlap there. A little bit here, just underneath. There, that looks better. So when you look at it now, it really does look like the dog is sitting on top of a glass tabletop or a glass floor. But of course, that would be unrealistic. I would never photograph a dog looking like that. Um, and even if I did, there would still be some things that would be slightly different. Firstly, you would expect the reflection to be ever so slightly blurred, just a little bit. You would also expect the reflection not to have quite the same colour as the dog because whichever material is the reflective surface is going to have an impact on that uh, colour. So to do those two things, firstly we're going to blur the reflection and then we're going to change its intensity. Make sure we're selecting the smart object and not its mask. We get a filter, blur, Gaussian or Gaussian blur. And we can tune that. Let's just put that to about 10 pixels, somewhere around there. And then already you can see that's looking more realistic. And then just to tune it and make that reflection look even more realistic, we're going to change how much you see of it. So we go to the layer opacity and we simply make it slightly less um, opaque. We just bring the opacity down a bit. Now, for this stage, I decide I want the surface to be, let's say, a slightly more like a vinyl rather than like a plastic. So again, this is why we put it, we converted the reflection layer to a smart object. I double click on that Gaussian blur and I can just increase the blurring. So now that looks more like the kind of um, vinyl, a soft, slightly semi matte vinyl. If I just want it to be a shadow, it's almost a shadow under the dog. I can simply turn the Gaussian or Gaussian blur all the way up. All of these are very easy to do. Um, and then just by adjusting the opacity, I can make it look stronger um, or less apparent. Really easy to adjust, really easy to use, really easy to create. All you need is a clean white shot to start with. And then a couple of very simple techniques, flipping it over, changing what, um, changing the blurring and changing its opacity and you have got yourself a first class reflection of a beautiful hearing dog and on that happy note if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful please do head across to masteringportraitphotography.com where there's a whole load more hopefully equally useful videos and remember until next time be kind to yourself take care